Hello everyone, this is Remlays from 40k Theories and welcome to the October 2021 edition of the Patreon Q&A sessions. As always, if you would like your questions answered, then click the link in the video description below and help support the channel by becoming a patron. Now, let's jump into the questions. Pentadus asks, How big are the Imperial Navy's ships? I've heard conflicting reports from different sources. This depends primarily upon the class of ship in question, because obviously a Dauntless light cruiser is going to be a hell of a lot smaller than, say, an Emperor class battleship. I'm not sure if any concrete sizes have been given in any sources. I could be wrong though, like it could be stated in Battlefleet Gothic, for example. But as far as I'm aware, the largest ships can measure several kilometers in length. Now, as to the exact amount, I couldn't tell you, I'm afraid. How do you feel about GW potentially supplying digital models at a discount to be 3D printed? I think that could be a pretty cool idea, though given that, as far as I'm aware, models are how GW mainly makes their money, aside from things like box games and stuff, etc., I can't ever see them doing that for risk of, you know, the files being pirated and, you know, and stuff like that. Um, it would be a cool idea, but I just don't think GW will ever do it, I'm afraid. Griffin of Might asks, Are false austerity still subject to the genetic flaws of a chapter, such as falling to the Red Thirst and Black Rage? As far as I'm aware, no they are not, considering that they never actually underwent the gene seed implantation process. They simply underwent surgical and cybernetic augmentation to make them comparable to an Astartes, not a true Astartes. Could the Red Thirst have been intentional on the Emperor's part to create a legion of berserkers? I don't think so, purely because if it was an intentional flaw, it'd probably be a lot more widespread throughout the ranks of the Blood Angels during the course of the Great Crusade, and really, it was very rare up until the events of Cygnus Prime. You know, before then, you know, it was a very, very rare flaw. So it seems like, you know, it was unintentional. It's not like with the Space Wolves where, like, you know, they got enhanced senses, you know, and stuff like that as, you know, in comparison to a regular space brain, because, you know, uh, Russ's DNA contains actual wolf DNA as shown in Deliverance Lost. It seems to me like the Red Thirst is purely a unintentional flaw. Would Robocop be considered a form of Skitari or closer to a Servitor? I have no, <laughs> no bloody idea. Um, if I had to guess, I'd say be closer to a Servitor. Not Servitor, uh, Skitari. Voice of the Emperor asks, Do you think you could play the guitar section of Halo's theme? I don't really remember much of Halo's theme aside from the fact it's got a choir and some cellos in it, um, but in either case it's kind of redundant considering that I'm a bassist, not a guitarist mainly. Brent Fees asks, Which Ordo is in charge of protecting the souls of humanity from the most insidious and dangerous form of heresy possible? Load-bearing walls. That'll be the Ordo Constructione. Th that's not real, don't take it as canon. I know someone out there will, but... Vrao asks, Given your recent episode regarding the Emperor's perpetuality, you mentioned that the Companion's armor is scorched black due to their exposure to the Golden Throne. Why do you think this is? It's implied that it's due to being exposed to immense concentrations of psychic energy. Now whether that psychic energy is caused by the Golden Throne itself or the Emperor himself, it's not entirely clear. Could be either or, could be both. Um, but so, yeah, um... Essentially, it's due to psychic radiation, essentially. Given the appearance of the Great Rift, there are rumours that the Emperor is regaining strength. How would the Great Rift help with the Emperor regaining his power? Right, so this ties in due primarily to the Psychic Awakening, because following the creation of the Great Rift, you had the events of the Psychic Awakening, which saw more and more psychers emerging throughout the human species. And essentially, it's due to this mass increase in psychic energy being scattered throughout real space that is supposedly aiding the Emperor in gaining his strength and possibly returning. That's the basic gist of it, according to Godblight. Zero Hits asks, We've seen stories about clone Primarchs before, but has there ever been a mention of a clone of Angron? Not specifically, though it's implied that one was made, because when Fabius Bar made you know, a whole bunch of Primarch clones, you know, it's implied that he made clones of all the Primarchs, even though the only clones of his we ever see across multiple stories are several clones of Ferris Manus that get bodied over and over again by Fulgrim, two clones of Fulgrim, one being a perfect clone and one being a... squid. 
it's basically got fangs and it's living in a water tank and it's shooting black ink everywhere, so it's a squid. <laughs> um, a clone of Lorgar, which is basically just a big wall of flesh, and the perfect clone of Horus. Um, aside from that, I don't think any other Primarch clones actually get names specifically, but given that it's implied he's done clones of all of them, there's bound to be an Angron one there somewhere. And finally, Austin Horner asks, Spoilers for Siege of Terror Warhawk. Okay, I've not actually finished reading Warhawk yet, so I'm not going to answer this question. So post this in the uh, thing for next month, because I should have finished the book by then, so I'll be able to answer it then. Sorry about that. And that concludes this edition of the Patreon Q&A sessions. As always, if you would like your questions answered, then click the link in the video description below and help support the channel by becoming a patron. Until next time, this has been Remlays from 40k Theories, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye!